chat and ask questions. Um, so feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions at any time. Kate's more than prepared for you to interrupt her and, and have a chat about things. And she'll share some hints and tips as well as a few straightforward recipes. Does that sound good to everybody? Excellent. Right, so if Rebecca, if you wouldn't mind starting the slides. Thank you. So this is just a very quick overview to explain who Canbrook are and what KeyTV is and the KeyTV family in the UK. So Canbrook was started in the US over 20 years ago by the parents of two children, Cameron and Brooke, who had a rare disease called PKU. Um, which is the one that the heel prick test is designed to look for on newborn screening. So all of your children would have been tested, um, but thankfully came back negative. So that's how Cambrook started. We came to the UK seven years ago, um, and that was my job. I came from being a dietitian in the NHS to set up Cambrook. Um, I did that for six and a half years on my own, and then I'm delighted that Sharon joined me six months ago. <laughs> so I now no longer have to do the whole of the UK. And so we share it between us. So if you could have the next slide, please, Rebecca. So this is the key to be product family that we have in the UK. Um, so we have three ready drink products. We have key to be chocolate and vanilla that can be taken as a ready to drink supplement. Um, and people might be on those once a day, maybe three times a day. So it could be a standalone supplement or it could be a complete sole source of nutrition. And just a couple of months ago, we launched KeyTV Peptide, um, which is designed as a tube feed for um, children who have um, gastrointestinal um, digestion issues. So that's partially pre-digested um, to help them absorb it better. So those are the drinks that are available in the UK. Next slide. So the benefits of key to be versus um, competitor formulas. Um, so we only use whey protein and this is known to involve improved gastric emptying, which is really important for children with epilepsy where they can have issues with reflux. It has a high MCT content and MCT fat is more efficiently processed into energy and ketones. So you get a better ketosis and more quickly. Um, and you can see there that they have differing amounts of MCT as their energy source. And then we're hoping that next year we'll be launching KTV plant based, which is currently available in the US and we'll be going into trials in the UK ready to apply for reimbursement. And um, we have added carnitine, which is essential for fat metabolism. Um, and we've made sure that our products have the lowest amount of carbohydrate in them possible so that it's less of an issue when you're getting little bits from medicines and other supplements. So those are the key differences with Ketovy. And then Ketovy Quick Mix, which is what Kate's going to focus on predominantly, is our baking mix. So it's a blend of almond flour, macadamia, nut meal and psyllium husk powder, which is a fibre. And um, it looks very like normal flour, just not quite as white, but you can use it to make cakes, biscuits, pancakes, pizzas, bread, all sorts of things. Um, and it has a four to one ratio like our other products and it also has MCT in it as well. We have a recipe book that goes alongside Quick Mix um, and this is sent out free of charge and it's also available to download from our website, which gives you lots of information and some ideas of recipes. And that's it from me. So I'm going to hand you over to Kate. Um, I'm going to put myself on mute and just hide my video camera. Um, and we will watch Kate and, and listen to her and learn from her. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself a little bit first, because sometimes, you know, when you see these recipes in the booklets and things like that, it's quite nice to know the person who's behind it and, you know, where they come from. Um, I've been working with Cambook for about a year, but I initially did a lot of the work to do with the PKU side, as Sarah's just mentioned. So it's, I've only been doing the Keto V stuff for about four to six months. Um, it's just as interesting as the PKU and the, the, the whole thing for me, because it's, it's what I love to do. Um, and I've really, really enjoyed just sort of getting my teeth into this. Um, I've always liked cooking. 
um, ever since I was a kid, my mum very quickly learned that I liked it. And by the age of 13, I was cooking like the whole family meal, <laughs> um, which she really, really liked. But I did learn a lot from her and from my grandma as well. Although they're quite sort of only a few sort of really good, you know, well-made meals. And I've branched out an awful lot more <laughs> as I've got older. Um, about four and a half years ago, I was struggling myself um, with just poor health really and uh, somebody suggested going gluten-free and it was the best thing that ever happened to me and I think because I'm a cook a home cook and I always have been I found it a lot easier to work myself into that sort of whole world because it's difficult it is difficult nowhere near as difficult as you know the, the, the what you'll have to go through with the, the the keto and stuff but it gives me an idea of what it's feels like to sort of be restricted to find it a bit difficult to find ingredients or know you know what you're doing so I took to being gluten-free probably a lot easier than most people would do because I cook so much that I've had an instinct about what I could swap out and what I couldn't and I think that's probably the hardest part sometimes um I do now I really really do like to eat food from all around the world and I mainly cook it at home in fact I'm notorious for not really wanting to go out because <laughs> it's stressful you can't you have there's an element of trust that you have to give to people who are cooking for you when you have an intolerance to something or you can't have something so eating out or even eating at, at friends houses can be quite sort of stressful so I tend to do an awful lot here which my husband loves he's he's not a foodie necessarily he just loves all food <laughs> apart from bananas, which you cannot get him to eat. Um, and he's, but he's very, he's always very honest with his feedback, which I quite like. I don't, I wouldn't want him to just eat something and just tell me it was good and, and it's not really. And my, our sons, he has a son and I have a son and they're full grown now and they've moved out and it's just me and him. And he has taken to eating a lot of gluten-free foods to save me from cooking two different meals because for a long time when both the boys were at home I was having to cook gluten meals for them and gluten-free meals for me and it's he's made it easier on me by just saying do you know what I can't tell the difference so and I, I take that as a, a big compliment <laughs> that he's willing to eat something that's you know most people would think is not not nice but hopefully I do it justice um in fact last night we we fired up the pizza oven for the first time he's made me a, a proper pizza oven in the garden and we had it on a gluten-free dough and it was amazing and I'm blowing my own trumpet there but very very good but I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit um I think because I am a cook and I've been doing it for a very very long time and I've done it professionally for a number of years as well working in nurseries with children who have got who can't have dairy who are pescatarian who have all sorts of you know the usual nut allergies but a few strange ones sort of thrown in and I sometimes you know it was a child is starting today and they can't have this and I'd be oh okay <laughs> and I'd have to very quickly think about what I was swapping out and what I was putting in and you have to really think about what you're putting in and also how you're preparing stuff when you've got children with allergies or intolerances um but it's given me a good basis for what I'm now doing with with Canbrook and, and with keto v mix and the liquid so it's it's along with my own gluten-free issue and working with having to make meals for, for children who can be quite fussy because it was a nursery so you're talking from zero up to, to four um it's given me quite a good understanding of helping children initially also but also having to swap things out quite quickly and work out what will work where but obviously that means that I might think that something is very very simple to make and um, people you know like you who've got to cook these at home might look at that and think well, that looks quite complicated to me because you know you're not some people just aren't confident with cooking and there's nothing wrong with that um some people can get a little bit um just I don't know just have this thing about oh you know everybody should be able to cook and it, it's not it's not the case but a lot of people want to cook and just don't know where to start but um especially when you're doing something where it's you know it's this is 
from what I can gather, this is mainly for your children. So there's pressure there and there's, there's stress. And what I'm hoping is that what I do is going to help ease you into that and make it more accessible to you and get rid of a little bit of that fear as well. So and I understand as well that, in you know, this day and age at the moment, budgeting is a big thing. You know, it's all very well being restricted with the ingredients, but that can make it quite expensive sometimes. I know it does for me being gluten-free, gluten-free stuff to buy is expensive, which is also another reason why I cook from home sometimes. So finding cheaper ways of making things and making it quick because you might be at work and you've got to, you know, then do it. Now for me, I was, I've been ill for most of my adult life. So for me, it was, I need to cook this quick because I can only stand up for so long. I'm, I'm fine now, but, um, that was a big thing for me. It had to be quick. It had to be cheap because I wasn't working and it had to be nutritious. It had to be, you know, what my kids wanted to eat and was good for them. So I try and put that into the recipes that I started to create as well. Um, and like I said, I was a picky kid. So I kind of understand what it's like sometimes to have to try and sneak things in, you know, maybe you've got to puree some things that they can't see the chunks and, you know, and that kind of stuff. And hopefully, that's that's going to feed back into you know what I create for you and that's certainly the hope anyway so uh <laughs> that's enough about me anyway but, I'm, but today I'm going to talk about a little bit about equipment I'm going to cook the pizza which is a recipe that that I use not with the keto mix but in general at home an awful lot uh the almond cookies and the chia pudding which is a pre-existing recipe um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the hints and tips that I've picked up using this stuff in order to try and help you. So the idea there being is that I've done the experimentation so that you don't have to. Um, and then I've got a few other recipes that I've made that I'm just going to literally do like a blue pizza. Here's what I made earlier. And, um, and then hopefully take some questions and maybe even ask some questions myself that is going to get me into a better place in order to help you so uh we'll crack on with the uh, the cooking I think I am a little bit nervous so <laughs> please bear with me I'm going to do the the pizza well, I'm going to do the cooking first sorry thinking about it so one of the things that's that's helped me is because I'm gluten-free and sometimes I'm having to cook myself something separate is small little pans and things like this so I know this this is from I can't name certain shops, but there's certain cheap shops where you can get little individual pans. I mean, this is actually a cake pan, but there's nothing stopping you. In fact, I'm going to use it to, to put the, the, the pizza in today. You've got something small, and if you can sneak it in the oven, if you're making food for the rest of the family or yourself, and you've got the one person who has to have something small, the smaller it is, the easier it is to sneak in with everything else. And also, you know, when you've got, you don't want a, a big, huge pan when you're cooking an individual, you know, small meal. So anything that you can pick up that is a little bit smaller, like these. And we have, excuse the noise. These I picked up um, from a supermarket. It was a set of three. The other one is in the freezer with a corned beef pie, gluten-free <laughs> in it. Because if you can put these in the freezer as well, so you can make an extra meal and then put it in the freezer, which is good. Um, because you're dealing with quite, small amounts sometimes um, and everything has to be so precise if you're trying to make for example like the the, uh, the cookies now the, the one I'm going to do in a minute I know it just makes two so you can it's easy to divide that by two but if you wanted to make some more and freeze them for example I quite often use a tablespoon measuring spoon or a scoop ice cream scoop that's the one that you can Get rid of because I know that that's going to be the same amount each time so they're all going to be the same size and I think with what you're working with with you know very fine details about the ingredients and all the nutrients that, that are in that this is quite a, a good idea really um, and I'm going to be cooking the, the pizzas in a little silicone tub but these are brilliant these are the reusable ones so you can just wash them out and I just thought that for kids having them in different shapes and sizes sometimes, because obviously you do eat with your eyes, they do say that. So having something that looks a bit fun as well can just maybe engage them a little bit more too. Um, 
I'm going to, I am going to cook the pizza now. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I've gone through the equipment. So just bear with me while I'm trying to do it. If you can't see, do let me know. I will try and tilt it up to the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. I do have everything pre-measured out just to try and help. So, because obviously you don't need to see me just randomly measuring things. So this is a, a keto V mix one. And I did actually initially do this um, with the idea that you could use the, the sachets of quick mix, but I understand that they are not really available at the moment, but you can still, you know, weigh out from the, the big bag and that that's not a problem. So the, the recipe is, I've done it for 28 grams, just because it's, it's easier. And I have put the, the, uh, the salt in here as well, which is 0.3 grams. Straight to bowl, and they, hopefully these are all going to be nice and simple for you. And then full fat Greek yogurt, and it's the equal amount, and that's the key to this recipe. And this is the recipe that I use a lot: equal flour to equal Greek yogurt. And I was curious as to whether it would work with keto remix, but it did beautifully. So I'm going to add that in and give it a bit of a stir. The only thing that I would say is that. When you're measuring stuff out, um, you're always going to get a bit of residue. So theoretically, you're getting a little bit less in there. Um, but it's much better to measure out into separate bowls or dishes. Because if you go over while you're trying to tip it in, it's a lot difficult to take it out if you've already got quite a few ingredients in there. Um, and I would always, if you're struggling, for example, when you're doing egg, which I've done for, for the almond cookies, I would have, I could be wrong here, Sarah will tell me, but if you go slightly under as opposed to slightly over, that's always going to be better because obviously everything's worked out down to a T. So keeping it slightly under, if you're struggling to get the exact amount, is a lot easier than, than going over or trying to get it to the absolute to point, you know, two, two, zero. So I'm just going to give this a mix now. It's quite a wet, it's warm in this kitchen. So to excuse that so I don't know if you can see that but that is literally just the flour and the yogurt all mixed together and I'm going to make two little small pizzas out of this one you can make one one larger one and what I found with this recipe is that you don't want to be adding normally normal person would just add flour now to be able to mold it or whatever you can't do that so the quickest thing is to wet your hands you just need a tiny bit of dampness just to help you handle the dough. So I'm going to split that into roughly two and then have it in my hands. This recipe actually works better if you can leave this dough just for a few minutes just to settle. And it is wet, it's sticky, don't worry about that. Into a rough disc and then I'm putting it, you can see there, into a little silicone tub. But again, you can use a muffin tray if you want to make these little individual pizza bites. And I'm gonna just wet my hands again. I've got a bit of... Same thing, try and get all of your mix out because obviously this is all calculated. Same thing, little bit of a ball, bit of a disc, flatten out a little bit and inside. These are supposed to be a little bit thicker. So as I was doing this, I've got them in the two little trays. I, don't, I wouldn't worry necessarily. You can use a muffin tray. There's nothing to stop you from putting it straight into one of these. And I'll show you the difference at the end. <coughs> When I did this before, I've got my tomato puree mixed out there, but I actually went on the weighing scales, did it into two little lumps so that I was able to just put it on. And again, do you know what? You can use a spoon if you want, but it's probably actually easier to just use your finger with this one. As long as you don't mind getting your hands wet. So I'm literally just going to put that on, smother it out so that it looks the same as a normal pizza equal between the, the two. Again, if it's one big pizza, this covers the whole pizza. I'm gonna have to wash my hands again, sorry. <laughs> I 
And then nice and simply, we are topping with the cheese. Excuse the fact that I've had to cling film all of this, but I've had to have it set out for a while. And so you've got your 20 grams of pizzas. That was seven grams of tomato puree. You've got 20 grams of, of mozzarella. This is the grated mozzarella. Um, it does, because they put a bit of rice flour in it, that does send up the carbohydrates, which is why it's down to 20. But actually, if you get fresh mozzarella, the fat content is slightly higher, but the carbohydrates is, is slightly lower. Um, and you can definitely do that. Just remember, it's going to be a bit wet. So sometimes it does leak a bit of fluid. So I'm just going to put these on top of here. Hopefully you can see that. And the biggest thing is that you always have to use all of the ingredients that it says and make sure it's all used up or be, you know, slightly under isn't too bad, but definitely don't use more. And then I'm just going to pop these into an oven that's put on at 180, which I've already got going in here. These take about 10 to 12 minutes. It does depend on your oven. Most people know that their ovens depend, you know, work in a different way and behave in a different way. So this one is about 10 minutes. And I'm genuinely going to set a time on my watch because I normally use um, certain smart things, but I didn't want to, <laughs> to do anything where I was saying out names of things. So I'm going to do it on my watch instead, if that's okay. Because I like to have my timers on so that I don't forget, because I do forget. <laughs> While the pizza is cooking, I'm going to do the almond biscuit. Just before I do that, does anybody have any questions? No, all good, brilliant. Right, I love this almond biscuit recipe. I saw this as a, as a keto recipe with nut flour and um, it's just, simple and perfect and it tastes really good and for, for people who don't have to eat this for, to say that it tastes really nice is actually really good I think. So again I did this with um, 28 grams just in case you're able to use the the, uh, the little sachets when they do come back into uh, you know, when you're able to order them again if you are but otherwise 28 grams of the keto flour, keto V flour. And again, this one is so simple and nice because it's only a few ingredients again. So we have the trivia icing sugar. I think you could, probably could use the granulated if you don't have the icing in. Um, I don't know if it would just be slightly, have like a slight graininess to it, but that might actually be quite, quite nice. So I'm going to put that into there. Yeah. I don't think you have to stir this. I think as long as you give it a bit of a stir when it's just the two flours, or the, the flour and the sugar, sorry, and get any lumps out of the sugar, because there are lumps in the flour. There's sometimes little tiny bits of, of nut, which I actually think lends really well to this recipe. So just give it a little bit of a stir first. And then the next ingredient is um, 13 grams of egg, which has been beaten. So that's it. Apart from the nuts you're going to put at the end, that's just it. When you first add this, you're going to wonder what on earth I was thinking and whether this is going to come together, but I promise you it does. So at the moment, it's, you know, doesn't look like it's going to be enough liquid. It's very crumbly to begin with, but the Weirdly, the more you mix it, the more it comes together as a dough and you just keep going. You see there, it's just starting to stick together a little bit. And now it's starting to actually, you know, ball up a little bit and look more like an actual dough. And now it's properly coming together. So at this stage, you don't, it's not like, you know, when you're working with, with 
normal flour and gluten where you have to develop the gluten it's not that kind of thing this is you know a nut based thing so there's no kneading or anything like that that's one nice thing about keto and gluten free because it tends to be you know quite similar so it's all a bit of a ball now and all I'm going to do is split it I mean I, I normally get this in my hands to be honest a little bit of a, a sausage and then it's just easier to sort of know that that's halfway you can measure it if you want to if you want to be Paul Hollywood and British Bake Off you can definitely put it on the weighing scales to make sure they're both equal amounts but I don't think we really need to, to go that far and then a little ball a little indentation in the middle which is where the nut is going to go and then onto your baking tray you can't see that there I'll just put that there we'll do the other one again nice little ball it stays together it's not I don't you know need to wet my hands or anything like that it's a really easy dough to handle it's warm in this kitchen now as well and it's still not really sticking so they both go on there like that and then we have two almonds and I did say in the recipe most of them weigh around a gram so just make sure that whatever almond you choose doesn't weigh more than a gram each otherwise that's going to mess up with the calculations so you put that just on the top in your little indent that you made with your finger like that and then that's going to go in the oven but I'm just going to wash my hands first of all. I'd rather cunningly put my soap in the other kitchen, so please excuse the hygiene issue. <laughs> so I'm just going to have a quick check on the pizza before I put these in. <coughs> Looking good, not quite there. So these, again, 180. Most recipes are for around 180 degrees centigrade. I think we're all British here, so most of them would be centigrade and not Fahrenheit. Um, in the oven again, I'm not gonna bother about the fact that I'm putting cookies in the oven with the pizza and the crossover smells. I don't, I, I don't have time to worry about that when I've got different gluten-free things going on and I've got my oven on. So I'm trying to put as much of it impossible, as possible in there to try and help save money. Cause you know, you put your own oven on nowadays and it costs a bit. Now they're going to be, they take slightly longer, I'd say about 12 minutes. Again, it depends on your oven. I'm just going to make a note of what, <laughs> what time it is. Um, but that, you know, that's it. They, they don't take long at all. They, 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 uh, they're very, very quick to make and they cool down quite quickly once they're cooked as well. So it'd be good to do that with kids, you know, having them rolling around in balls and, and stuff like that. Kids enjoy that kind of interaction. So that, that'd be quite fun. So I'm going to move on to the, while those two are cooking, because I've still got another three and a half minutes left of the pizzas cooking. I'm going to just do the, the chia pudding. And Sarah has very kindly given me a very nice jar with a lead lid to put this in because this is an overnight soaking one. But again, nice and simple. Everything in, stir it, fridge, then it's there ready for your breakfast. Or if you want it as a pudding, you know, you can, I suppose you have to think about the, your, your, how, what you've had in the day and, and things like that. But it does need a good sort of eight hours of, of soaking into really. So, Please excuse my little plastic pots that I've done this with, so because I've weighed all this out. So this is using the Keto B vanilla liquid. So it's only it's not the full thing this time. It's not the full um, sachet jar thing. It's only forty grams of it. So that goes in, and then we have. Full fat cream, and this is 30 grams. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure that I get all of the, uh, the bits out of these tubs. Um, this is 
40 mil, but it's 40 grams. It's the same as I, I double checked and made sure that, you know, what I was measuring out is, because not everything goes as small as, as 40 mils. I had to use two tablespoons and then one teaspoon and to get it to 40. But when I measured it, it was 40 grams as well. And I've put the five grams of um, vanilla extract in here as well, which is why it's brown water. That's not just my water that goes in. And then your chia seeds, which again, I've weighed out. The chia seeds is 43 grams of whole chia seeds. And they go in. Now in the recipe book, it says five grams of cinnamon, but I would say it's up to five grams. Um, you don't have to use the cinnamon if you don't want to. Um, you can just put a little amount in, or you can put the full amount in, or you could do what I'm going to do on this one, which is sprinkle a bit um, on at the very end if you want to. That, that's a, a taste thing, really. But this tastes, you know, very nice just as it is. So a nice mix. And it's very liquidy, you know, the seeds are thin. Just make sure all the seeds come off. Sorry. <laughs> Pop the lid down, and straight into the fridge. And that's it for that one. So I'm gonna go backwards a little bit with this one and show you what that one looks like because we've still got about 20 seconds. Um, Pre-made, as I said, Blue Peter style. I've got 16 grams of kiwi fruit that I'm going to put over the top. And then a little sprinkling of cinnamon. I mean, there is cinnamon in this one as well. Sarah and I both like cinnamon. And that's ready to go. That's literally it. I tell you, okay, you have to put a little bit of forethought in because you're, you're doing it the night before and putting it in the fridge. But then you wake up and then it's just ready for them to eat. Nice and tasty as well. I like this one, it's a, it's a good recipe. I've actually um, had that in the fridge for longer than the eight hours and I think it's just developed even more. So eight hours isn't the limit, you can have it for, for longer than that if you need to. Right, and my watch has gone off so hopefully my pizza is ready. And this this dough is so simple that it doesn't take much to cook it anyway so you are kind of going by the cheese on top really so I'll just you have to excuse the fact that these have moved a bit it's because I'm moving them around a little bit obviously it'd be better if they're a bit more circular but I'm going to show you the difference anyway but that's it you know they're, they're ready to eat little pizza bites they might they're really good to have in a little lunch box maybe or something like that if you want to make it this one if you want to make it a tea you know do it in a, in a big as a big you know single size pizza um you can you could theoretically leave off the tomato puree if the kids aren't there's, there's nothing to say that you have to have tomato puree on on pizzas as long as you do your calculations and make sure that you know you you're not adding something that is going to affect it. You can just put cheese on it if you want. There's, there's nothing to say that you have to have the tomato. Um, but they, they, they taste so good. They're probably slightly easier to get out of there as well. But I'm just going to show you what they look like if you do them. Please excuse me going off camera all the time. So these, I made these this morning, and that's the little, the one in the, that's done actually you know, without being crushed a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, nice, you can get it out easy because it's silicone, it just pops out. You know, it's just a really good little bite. So it should be two of those. I did one straight into the muffin tray and it looked like that. So, you know, it, initially I thought, well, this is going to stick, <laughs> but it just popped out. I must admit, I do have, I've had this for a very long time. I have a little mini, um, spatula type thing and it's great for getting small things it's supposed to be for icing cakes but I use it to get things like this out of muffin trays all the time but that looks 
you know, tasty and nice. It's, it's, it's a good little recipe. That's the pizza. Excuse me going off camera every now and again, but my kitchen's quite sort of spaced out. Um, there is a couple of minutes left. I'm just going to double check the, the cookies because basically, even though I say sort of 10 to 12 minutes, if they're browning on top, they should be pretty much done. They do need just a few more minutes. In fact, I'm going to set a timer if that's okay with everybody. Please excuse me for messing around with my watch. I promise it is just a two minutes. The, um, I would leave the pizza to cool a little bit before you try and pop it out of those little shells. Um, the biscuits, when they, I'll show you when they, when they come out, but they will seem soft, but most biscuits are soft when you first bring them out of the oven and they firm up a little bit as they cool down. So you're not gonna be able to eat those straight away, apart from the fact that it'd be, the, the, the nut on top will be the, you know the temperature of lava um there is definitely a little bit of patience involved in that with letting them cool down a little bit but obviously your pizzas can be you know handling wise you need them to cool down just a tiny bit to get them out if you're doing them in the silicone cups but otherwise you know straight to eat and all good with that um i'll very quickly show you i was going to show you the recipes at the uh, the end but i just want to show you um just going back to the silicone cups this is a little um peanut butter and blueberry no bake bite and again it's just like a little simple thing it's in another of my little funny shapes silicone mugs i'll go through the recipe at the very end but even the pizza done you know in that size you know if it's going to go in a, like a little lunch box or something like that just it just Things like that can make the kids smile and think, oh, you know, look at my heart shaped or star shaped pizza. It, it's, it's things like that. Right, let's, if you do anything that's got sugar in, by the way, when you're cooking with, with the, the cookies and stuff, you do have to check them quite regularly because the sugar can very quickly go. Turn this off, oven off, because it's very, very hot. <laughs> and I'm stood right over it. So I don't know if you can see there, but there's our two little almond cookies. So I'm going to put those to one side to cool. But again, I have made some that I can manhandle and show you up a bit closer, just so that you can see. They are really, really, really tasty. That's the, the, the two of them together, you know, nice and brown underneath, a little bit golden on top. Yeah, that one's split a tiny bit. It's, you know, it doesn't, sometimes if there's a large nut where that ball was formed, that happens, but I think aesthetically, that's what makes them brilliant anyway. It just makes them look even better. So I'm gonna, go through a few hints and tips now. Um, because the flour is a nut-based flour, as Sarah said, it does actually lend itself quite well for um, things like making breadcrumbs with it, so using it as the breadcrumb. Um, occasionally you do get a slightly larger piece of nut. So if you're doing something that you know, you don't want a big piece in, just make sure that as you're spooning it out of your packet, that if you want it, to, if you need it to be a bit more smoother, just avoid those sort of slightly larger bits of nut. But obviously with the almond cookies and things like that, and if it's a dessert, you know, you have those big chunks in it, it's nice to crunch through. Be careful of the little sachet that's in there that I nearly spooned <laughs> while I've been uh, measuring out in the past that's to stop it from clumping, obviously. Um, yeah, there is a sachet of like a little silica in there to stop it from being too damp. Don't measure that into your stuff, which is what I've done in the past. Um, the, you, you, you know, anything that's, that's a nut-based uh, recipe, for example, those almond cookies, it was with um, almond flour. So you can swap that in 
as an equal amount. You don't have to, to mess with that at all because it's a predominantly a, a nut base. So it works well making breadcrumbs and it works well uh, with nut based recipes as well. Um, I've done halloumi fries, which I used as the breadcrumb, which I will show you in, in a bit as well. Um, and I've successfully frozen them and, and reheated them as well. So sometimes you might want to make more and freeze it, but I'll go through that in a bit as well. Um, I would definitely recommend measuring out into smaller dishes and not straight into one bowl, as most people would do. Uh, they talk about cooking and baking being baking more being a bit of a, a chemistry and you have to be um, very precise and everything so most bakers would but would, they would still just measure into to the one bowl but because you're working with very very small amounts it's too easy to, to you know slip or have too much go in so I would definitely recommend how, even though it's more washing up put everything into little bowls even like I've done today and then put it in because it, it you like I say you work in such small amounts sometimes it's too easy to, to go over and then it's difficult to get it out of you know what is already in your bowl if you've already got a few things in there um that the yogurt base that I used for the pizza is really good for other stuff as well I as you know for, for gluten-free I've done cinnamon rolls where it's just the yogurt and flour and then a little bit of, I use sugar, obviously, but you can use the, um, the, the granulated sweetener um, and a little bit of cinnamon and, you know, put it in a strip, roll it up. You can make breadsticks where you're putting just a tiny bit of oil and some herbs on top. Again, you, you always have to be careful of your calculations and it's worth just double checking with that. But it can be used in so many different ways. It can be used to make a simple scone, just yogurt and flour the, the, the keto v um quick mix so it's a really good quick go-to if you're in a rush and you're having to knock something up but you want something to maybe be a bit treaty as well it's you know scones cakes and pizzas and breadsticks and all that kind of stuff that simple recipe of equal amounts works really really well and it works really well with the keto because you've got that that liquid in there that helps hold it all together it works the same as with my gluten-free flour the, um, the Keto V liquid is very like a coconut milk. So if you find a few recipes of coconut milk drinks, um, again, watch your calculations and make sure about what you're adding. But it should behave in a sort of similar-ish way as, as just having a, a coconut milk. Because obviously it's, it, it does have that. It's not, you can't swap it out necessarily for just a normal milk recipe. It does have a slightly different texture and it's you know it's got more fat in it obviously because that's what they need so but coconut milk if you've got a recipe that's got coconut milk you should in general be able to just swap that out if you're cooking a meal and you've got extra time and only do this if you feel like you've got extra time there's no need to put pressure on yourself but if you suddenly find that you've got more time than you thought you had make extra and freeze it i do that all the time you know and or sometimes I will make extra knowing that there's only two of us eating and I'll make enough for four. And we just have that for our tea the following day as well. Um, you, as long as your calculations are right and you're using exactly half and you know that you're using exactly half, then you should be OK. It's, it's a lot easier when it's an individual. So even if there's a recipe from Risaka, for example, in the, the recipe book, you put it in a little individual dish. You know, you've got your ingredients weighed out. You, you can make it two dishes, you know, cook both, freeze one, and then you've got something in the freezer. The freezer is definitely my best friend. It certainly helps me a lot. And I can imagine that if you need to have a few things that are just ready made and ready to, ready to shove in, then that's a good way. If you've got that little bit of extra time, think about maybe making two of whatever you're making, like the pizzas, you could easily make that, you know, into four or, or whatever and, and free. And the pizzas freeze really, really well. And then it's just a case of making sure it's cooked all the way through when you're reheating it. Um, you can, I've not actually tried freezing the raw dough, but you can certainly freeze these cookies um, for sure. And again, I mentioned about freezing the, the halloumi fries. I've even frozen the English muffins, which I'm gonna show you as well. And they're all fine. The cookies, you can just let defrost and have it. If you want, you could warm it up slightly. 
in the oven or in the air fryer. I've cooked those in the air fryer as well, the cookies. They work really well. I've cooked the pizza in the air fryer. You just have to slightly tone down the, the temperature. You know, instead of 180, you might want to think about 160 or slightly lower, depends on your air fryer again, um, and cook it slightly slower. But you, there's no warming up with an air fryer, so it's on for less amount of time. You know, it, 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 things don't seem to take quite as long. But also sometimes if you're just doing one meal, it's easier to put it in the air fryer than have one huge big oven heating up for, you know, for one small pizza. Um, I quite often microwave things to soften them, especially nowadays. Um, with I try not to use my oven as much, to be quite honest with you. Microwave it first to soften it, vegetables and things like that. If you're doing a little bit of a roast veg, you can speed up the process by starting it in the microwave and then finishing it off maybe in the air fryer or um, in the oven if you want. But then it just cuts down the cooking time. And I think that helps with budget, but also your time frames if you're trying to do something um, really, really quick. Uh, if you are struggling with, with fruit and, and vegetables, the restricted amount that they can have, um, sometimes it's just chunks that kids have a problem with. Puree it maybe, you know, there's the key way on top of there. You could always just try and, you know, mash it up a little bit and maybe mix it in instead of having it as a big green chunk on top, you know, and try and do that a little bit as well. Um, you, because you're dealing with very specific amounts, you might have, eggs is a really good example of this, you know, the, the cookie was 13 grams of egg. You, you, an average egg is around, a large egg is around 60 grams, between 50 and 60 grams. So you're always going to have a bit left over. So your options there are, use up the full amount of egg by making more of the dough. But you can freeze egg. You can't freeze it in the shell, obviously. And you're better whisking up, but that recipe involved you have using beaten egg anyway. So you could even weigh it out and have. I mean, they do use a lot of these little little tubs. You can buy them, or you can get them from your takeaway if you have things in there. <laughs> but you could freeze thirteen grams and know that you've got the flour in the fridge if you've already opened it because it does need to be kept in the fridge once open to just to try and preserve it. A little bit preserve the freshness and your sugar in general can be in the cupboard you know you don't have to go out and get that on the day but you know you could always knock up a cookie because you've got 13 grams of, of beaten egg in the fridge or you know just if you feel like you're going to cook a little bit extra have it in a, in a slightly bigger tub but freezing beaten egg doesn't adjust it at all it, it works really really well and obviously your even cheese and things like that, people are quite surprised when you can find out that you can actually freeze cheese. So you, 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 there might be times where you have ingredients where um, freezing is a better way of, of having it on tap when you need it in the future and also using up what's you know, been left over because food waste it is a waste of money, really. Um, the... When you look at the cost of things, if we just talk about budget for a little bit, in general, when you look, the price of, of frozen fruit and some frozen vegetables can appear more expensive. But when you think about having to peel, having to cut up, not maybe using up the whole thing before half of it rots and ends up going in the bin anyway, freezing, having frozen fruit and veg can actually be cheaper because there is no waste. I quite regularly, I have frozen pineapple quite a lot and it takes, it takes about 20 minutes for it to defrost. I get it out, leave it on the, the side with a, a lid over it and it's defrosted and I you know, have it on kebabs and on pizza and stuff like that. And because you're using quite small amounts, sometimes having it frozen is a better way of, of doing it as opposed to having a huge pineapple or, you know, you're only quite often only using half of a fruit. The, the kiwi, the 16 grams of kiwi that I did for the pudding, the chia pudding, was only half of a, ki of a kiwi. So, you know, you, you've got that other half of a, of a kiwi to do something with. Some of that can be meal planning and working out, well, I know I'm going to need half a kiwi for this. What can I use it for within the next two days if I keep it in the fridge? to use it up and that's another good way of not wasting stuff um, is to try and work out what else you could put it in that's different to what they've already had 
that still incorporates that ingredient. Um, I do the same with garlic and ginger. I have frozen onion. I, I do buy fresh onions um, depending on what I'm making. But if I'm just making a, a you know, a, a, a sauce, a bolognese sauce or a moussaka or something like that, I have it frozen because it, you, by the time you've taken off all the skin, you know, chopped off the two ends and then chopped it off, you've probably thrown away about a fifth of the onion anyway, you know. So that, that's a really good way. So although it might seem more expensive to buy initially, it can end up being, you know, cheaper to work that way. Um, garlic's another good example of that. Who uses three bulbs of garlic? <laughs> you know, I think Sarah said that she goes through garlic quite a lot, but, I, you know, I don't. Um, when you eat out, just checking that we've got enough time for... I still have a countdown, unfortunately, sorry. Yeah. Um, eating at friends' houses causes a lot of stress for me. I have a trust issue with, because people don't understand what gluten is and what, and therefore what it's in. So um, I, what I, my little trick that I do is that I will ask them what they're cooking and say to them, I will bring my gluten-free version of that so you could bring your keto v version of that if you're going around to somebody's house especially with kids i mean the pizza one's quite good because you go into the people's houses the kids are going there send the pizza with them and then they're having pizza their friends are having pizza and it's a lot less stressful for the child they don't feel like they're you know standing out because i certainly feel like that sometimes that there's a bit of a you know oh you know, Kate's different. She's got to have gluten-free, especially if you're in restaurants and stuff, but more at people's houses. Ask them what they're cooking and tell them you will bring a relevant, you know, sort of to their diet, same thing, basically. And it just, I think it would just help children, especially if they want to eat out and eat at different places, to feel a bit more normalised about that. Um... I think we've I think I've covered everything that I could think of sort of hints and, and tips wise so are there any questions that anybody would like to to ask about anything that I've done or just keto v in general no but I don't, I, I'm going to take that as a massive compliment and just assume that it's because you feel like I've covered a lot of things <laughs> We do have someone raising their hand. Mm -hmm. um, you're welcome to unmute and um, uh, voice your question. Hi, yes. Um, thank you very much. Um, my little boy would struggle to eat the full almond on top of the almond biscuit. Is if, if it was grated down into a sort of a shredded bit to be eaten with the biscuit, is that all right as well? Would that be an no, alternative? Leave it off. You okay. don't have yeah, there's, there's already the nuts inside. The, the, the keto V mix is probably the biggest part. The almonds just to make it look pretty and, you know, and it is just adding extra sort of calories and, and, and carbs, really. But I would say leave it off for him and just, I mean, in theory, in a normal world, you could put a splodge of jam and stuff like that. Your world is slightly more complicated because you have to think about what you're adding and, you know, how much that adds on to the ingredients and everything. But just leave it off. It, it would be you can make a nice look you, what you could do is get a fork and do the the impression in the top just to make it look different in that way make it look a bit more like a biscuit but i'd say just leave it off yeah thank you maybe, maybe chopping it up <laughs> anybody else rebecca you'll have to let me know if anybody's writing or anything <laughs> Um, nothing in the chat. Um, anyone put their question in the chat as well. Yeah, I do have a question for everybody else, and it's something that maybe they've not considered. But is there any meal that you particularly struggle with, or you feel like you're going to struggle with that you would need, you know, help with that you that maybe you'd like me to do um, a recipe for, or is there a certain ingredient that you know that they should have a lot of because they do tend to have a lot of cheese and you know the full fat yogurt and stuff like that is there anything that you're struggling to incorporate into their daily lives that you would like a bit of help with or more specifically as a meal that you've not got enough recipes for that you'd like more 
Right, my son, uh, he loves pasta. He absolutely loves, loves pasta. And we tried this uh, uh, packets which are made of a uh, cognac floor. Yeah. And, and he doesn't quite get that. It's not quite his taste. So how can we replace pasta to make it I mean, you... a little bit more yeah. like regular pasta? Is there any recipe for that? I think what, when you when you cook the pasta, what is he having it with? Is it like a red a bolognese sauce or with cheese on top? Or yeah, just some... uh, any sort of sauce. Just the pasta itself any... would quite like mm. pasta on its own. Yeah, um, I can. I don't. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure about specific pastas. I know that people use a lot of spiralized vegetables instead. Um, but one thing that I have seen recently and i haven't tried it so this is untested it'd have to be you experiment a little bit is using rice noodles instead of pasta um again you need to watch all your carbohydrates and your calories and, and stuff like that and i can have a look into that for you and see what it would be but and i've not tried it but in general a rice noodle is the same kind of you know you just have to you, the only trouble with rice noodles is they cook incredibly quickly. So you just have to be very careful. You don't leave it too long, but maybe it will give him what he's looking for with a little bit of, of pesto or, or something like that um, instead. But I can certainly look into that for you and have a look and, and have a see if I can find a, a, another alternative for you. But I think sometimes when I first tried gluten-free pasta, I did not like it. And it was the brand that made a difference to me. So I don't know if you can find maybe a different brand that, that makes it out of that flour um, and see if that works better, um, because that certainly is something that, that helps me with the gluten free, because some of them are shocking. <laughs> so sometimes it's just as simple as trying out the different brands and seeing if one other is doing it slightly better. But I'll certainly have a look at that in the background for you as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Kate, I wonder, um, making little gnocchi pillows, um, even just your Greek yogurt and the um, quick mix, and yeah. just little want little pillows, and then um, coating it in the sauce that might work. Oh, that's a, that's a good idea. Yeah, I quite often fry gnocchi. Well, I, we call it gnocchi, but I might be pronouncing it wrong. I fry it too. Um, and make it into little balls and I will have a try with that if you want and see if I can and then I can get Sarah to feed back to you how that went because I think sometimes it's you know it might be easier for me to experiment with it than you you know messing around but that's pasta meals might be a really good one for me to, to take on next and try and help out with that okay is that all right does that help yeah, that, yeah that's absolutely fine so so I'm, I'm just betting no. you Keto diet, yeah. it's just we're just about to start with, with, with my son, and I'm I'm kind of unsure about anything yet. We're just trying different things. I'm just trying to think how I can replace his favorite food. So uh, I know it's going to be we try he, out. For is he quite good with his vegetables? He loves vegetables. Yes. Yeah, I've just realized I didn't show you all the stuff that I made, but in the so in one of the things they do do the spiralized I'm sure I've seen it in here the the um we call courgette here the Americans called zucchini um as the pasta instead have you all got these little no I didn't the recipe book if you're quite new it will probably be on its way um to you it's got just the basic, um, some good, you know, simple recipes for you to go. I can't find it. Might be on the website actually. Maybe have a look on the um, the Keto V website. I'm sure I've seen using courgettes, spiralized mm -hmm. courgette instead. Because um, there's there's quite a few. I was supposed to show these, and I just remembered. <laughs> so mad at me. And I've just remembered as well. I was supposed to show you these um, ice lollies that I've made. Um, different ways to get things down. I'm just going to very quickly grab them from the freezer. Sorry, I feel like I've hijacked your question now. I've done the little 
rainbow lollies and one of these is avocado and you know what it's the best one <laughs> there's a little bit of avocado mixed in it and again this is using the keto v liquid and um, I just think with your son as well, maybe if you can find something on one of the other recipes that he likes as well as, you know, and maybe it might be that you can't exactly mimic and he might have to unfortunately learn that, that stuff that he's been able to have in the past, you know, he can't have, you know, for sure, because I think you do this for about two years, don't you? But if you can find something else that's maybe in some of these recipes, you know, even something as simple as, so that's the mermaid one the purple one then maybe that will help him ease into it a little bit if you can find another good thing that he really likes eating as well um i'm just trying to get the lids off these to show you all oh that's the the, the blue one unicorn that's the unicorn one actually no in that one I think I can find the avocado one because honestly, I would eat this. The green avocado one. That's tasty. That's really, I really, really like that one. That was called the dragon ice. I really, really like this. And I meant to show you as well the quick. This is the microwave English muffin. So it takes like a minute to cook. It's ridiculously easy. It's just the egg and the, the, the keto mix um, and a bit of baking powder and it cooks in the microwave and then you toast it and put some butter on it and honestly I've started making this with my gluten-free flour and having this as my breakfast because I really really like this one and I did forget to show you the halloumi fries as well I've just got three little halloumi fries here as well and it, it's cold now you need to remember that food looks better when it's hot sometimes but they crisp up so nicely and that's just the, the the halloumi rolled in the flour and fried you know it's, it's ridiculously simple maybe something maybe you might like something like that does he like halloumi sorry say again does he like halloumi do you think that might be something that he uh, i think like? yeah he would like that yeah yeah i think finding something else that is a good swap might be a really good thing as well try and encourage him to have to find a new favorite thing to eat maybe that will help yeah <laughs> Right, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Sorry, my question. Anything more, Rebecca? Uh, no, nope, chat is clear. Good. I, I, like I say, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that as a compliment. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> right. Um. What time is it now? Five past one. I've probably gone a little bit too fast, Sarah. <laughs> Not to worry. I thought that was amazing. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, it's really good, Kate. Well done. Thank you. I just hope it helps. That's the main thing is I just want to help people be able to get through this, you know, and, and do this for the two years that they've got to do it for and make it as, as easy as possible for them. Thank you. Um, we will leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you do have any feedback for us, if there's anything that you think we can do better, this is our first attempt. Kate's done brilliantly well. Um, she's managed to, to talk fluently for an hour, which is impressive yeah. in itself. That was <laughs> great. <laughs> and <cool. laughs> um, so, you know, please feel free to either send me some feedback. My email address is really simple. It's sarah at cambrook.com or you can message your dietitian if you'd rather do it anonymously. Please be honest with your feedback. We really want to make this work. If there's anything else that you want to see, if you'd like to do us, us to do it again, if you'd like to do us, us to do it in person, um, please let us know. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kate. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you. <laughs>